Dragon's Breath tea. Can't beat it. Hi everyone, so today is day four of my seven days of Halloween series and today I get to create another Halloween themed card. I don't make that many cards these days but Halloween is such a fun time I just can't resist it. So to begin I have a standard top folding card base. This is A2 in US size and A6 in UK, UK and European sizes and I have my Curiosities Ephemera Pack by Tim Holtz. But I'm also going to be using the Materialize paper pad, also from Tim Holtz, which are this year's Halloween releases. So to begin with, I'm just going to go through the paper pad, taking out some of the sheets of paper from that, the patterns that I like the most, the ones that I think I may want to use in the production of the card. I haven't really got a, um, a full picture of how I want the card to look in my head at this moment in time. I'm playing this a little bit by ear, but I definitely know I want to use the poison sheet. And there's also a couple of other sheets in that that I know I definitely want to incorporate in there somewhere. So now I've chosen the sheets that I want to use from the paper pad so I'm happy with the selection so these are the ones that I'm going to be using. Now it's time to choose what items from the ephemera pack I want to use. Now rather than let you sit there and watch me going through the pack item by item. These are the items that I've actually gone through already and pulled out as to be the ones that I want to incorporate into the construction of the card. So I'm going to begin by selecting one of the sheets of paper from the paper pad to use as my base layer for the actual construction of the card. So I've already got my black cardstock, so I need to cut one entire panel that's going to fit onto the entire of the card front but leaving a little white border or a little black border sorry all the way around. So before I stick my first panel down, I want to give it a little bit of a dirty, grungy effect all the way around. So I'm just going to use the Sepia Archival Link from Ranger. And I'm just going to, um, with the ink blending foam, I'm just going to go all the way around, all four sides, just to give it that little bit of a dirty look. So I'm happy with the colour around the edges so all I need to do now is to grab some glue and stick that panel down onto my card front and for that I'm using the multi-purpose glue from Colol. So next I'm going to grab a couple of the sheets of the papers from the paper pad that we're using and I'm going to cut these down using my paper trimmer into just smaller panels that I can then distress the edges of and stick down on the front of my card.
while I'm distressing and scruffing up the edges, I decide to add a little bit of a tear in one of them also. So not one to waste paper, on the reverse of one of the sheets that we've already used is the poison label. So I'm going to trim out a couple of those labels to also use in as embellishments on the front of the card. Now, although the design of these uh, papers are quite grungy and dirty and distressed already, it never hurts to have a little bit more. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm just adding a little bit more of that sepia archival ink to the edges and just to remove any of those white raw paper edges that you can see. Um, and just to bring it all together, um, make it a bit more of a cohesive, um, I want to say structure, but that's not the right word. Composition, there you go. So now it's time to take all the little ephemera bits and pieces and to work out exactly how we're going to include these on the front of the card. So I'm now going to pop this into fast forward just a little bit. I have been doing it real time so far so that you can see exactly what I'm doing as I'm putting all the little bits and pieces all together and then I'll join with you again when we're complete.
and with the addition to the two little poison labels on the inside of the card I'm going to call this complete. I don't think I need to add anything else to the card. Uh, I've added everything that I need to do to the front and just to add a little bit of continuation into the inside of the card. I can now have enough space to be able to write a little message at the top on the inside of the card in a white pen. So I'm calling this card complete. So I hope you enjoyed watching that little Halloween card be created. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for today. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Halloween project. See you all again real soon. Bye for now. Ooh! <laughs>